There is something fascinating about live events, the unscripted variety that often leaves us speechless or bent over laughing. I once used to spend an unhealthy amount of time watching such videos. At least I know it really did happen. That man really did whack himself in the balls. I'm going to see if I can throw a boomerang. <laughs> It is the unpredictability of live events, the truthfulness of it, the horror at times, and more often the deep look into humanity's true nature. The discovery of this true nature of humanity was conceived and achieved both wittingly and unwittingly by Tsuchiya as part of the television show Denpa Shonen. The man is hailed as a genius before his time and worthy of praise for bringing a different perspective into television, raw, chaotic, real, and unscripted. As he puts it, there are celebrities and stars who are loved, sure, but the truth is that any human being is quite fascinating when put in the right conditions. Shonen Denpa went on to be the most popular program in Japan. I remember once watching a comedy sketch in which people ran towards someone who was just walking by. It was so funny and made me wonder what I would do in a similar situation. It's truly genius to see how people behave, especially someone ordinary. And this type of programming led to live content, to pranksters, and the creation of influencers. <laughs> As the show went on, however, people started to get bored of the gimmicks, calling it more of a travel show than groundbreaking television. So they had to do something radical to get their viewers interested again, something that I believe is the most powerful singular moment in television. Hi, The show has become hugely popular, dedicated to putting young people through endurance tests. Every week, more than 30 million people tune in to watch some young hopeful endure intense hardship. Japan's latest human experiment in popular television. Tsuchiya, and yes I know my pronunciation of the name is wonderfully wrong, but he came up with a new idea. Why not film someone's every moment, take every aspect of their life and make it a television program? A couple of young hopefuls came to audition for the new show. After all, anything by Dan Pashonen would be legendary. All they needed was luck. Luck that Natsubi had in plenty both bad and good. <laughs> He won the chance to do something that even he didn't know at the time. And because he was new to the industry, hoping to build a career and even find fame and recognition along the way, he didn't sign a contract of any kind. No stipulations of how far they would push him. Natsubi simply agreed to work for them and was led blindfolded into a room. Next, he was told to strip, which I must say, you have to be a person of a certain boldness to even consider doing it. It goes back to the idea of human nature and something that Natsubi talks about later on. The Stockholm Syndrome, that when someone is put in a position where their life is in the hands of another, they're often more willing to comply and go along with anything. In this case, Natsubi hopes to become a comedian and he chose the perfect place to start out his career. He greatly admired and respected Struchia. <laughs> So why not go along with this plan and make a career out of it? He strips naked and is left in a room alone for the concept, can someone survive on prize winnings alone? Susunu Denpa Shonen challenge number one will be... Denpa Shonen's A Life in Prizes. Tsuchiya did several things that were very clever to make this show happen. Most people act very differently when they know they're being watched. That's human nature. That's why despite the rise of influencer culture, they don't really show their true selves because they know someone or even the whole world is watching. You think pranksters go around screaming at people in their daily lives? No, that would be beyond insane and they would have been institutionalized ages ago. It's all an act. Therefore, Tsuchiha had to get Nasubi to act more or less like himself, first by stripping him 
him naked. All of Natsubi's defenses were mentally broken by this. Second, by making him depend on winnings alone brought out his survival instinct, making him completely ignore how he was perceived. Basically, if you're starving, you don't really care if people hear you fart. And lastly, by saying that none of this would be aired, he gave Natsubi both fear and freedom. Freedom because he believed no one would see all of it, certainly not his delicates. But fear as well because he knew he had to accomplish something by this in order to get out. He knew he had to make the show funny enough to one day be worth airing. And he knew his fate rested heavily on the strange man behind the camera. With all this in place and without Natsubi's knowledge, the reality show Can Someone Survive on Prize Winning Alone in Japan became a near cult sensation. Everyone was watching it, students, professionals, people in the bar, even internationally people were talking about it. They tuned in every day to see a naked man dancing around after every win with his privates covered by a vegetable, a vegetable that later went on to represent the penis. Heck, I would have watched it too, daily. It was Big Brother before Big Brother and after Big brother and the reason it became a hit is because of something Rowan Atkinson said himself about comedy and you'd be amazed how often the big laughs depend on physical rather than verbal humor of the physical comedian the visual comedian kind of like Mr. Bean to use his body his expression as a form of comedy and that I believe is what the show intended to be and it's something that actually not to be achieved for Kevin as for any physical comedian the body is the essential means of expression. His body is his tool. It is possible to make comedy from the whole range of human emotions. Horror, pain, sorrow, bewilderment, hope, joy, smugness. Therefore, not only could the audience relate with him because of his struggles, but the strange circumstance of him being naked and obliviously unaware of how he looked was comedy gold. And instead of the audience feeling pity, they found it fascinating. Natsubi would remain in that room, isolated, naked and alone until he won 1 million yen. Ah, <laughs> Natsubi was given a diary to write in. His writing produced three copies in Japan that became best sellers. What is shocking to me is knowing that these were personal thoughts, thoughts that touched on the deep loneliness he felt, the uncertainty of it all, the fact that making a living off winnings from magazines was near impossible, requiring more than 200 postcards sent every day just for one bag of rice. They also touched on his thoughts about dying in order to escape that hell. As the days passed, the audience received these writings and they knew how not to be felt deep down. I'm lonely. I feel like I want to cry. I'm so miserable. Being alienated from human contact. Of course, the show was edited to feature only the happy and positive things, but anyone who understands anything about the human brain knows that it was a kind of torture, a hell in its own right. But recently, my thoughts keep wandering to the outside world. Scenes of what it was like to be an ordinary person, the smiling faces of my family. Having lost all awareness of days of the week, my grip on reality cannot be relied upon. My life has just been a struggle between sanity and madness. Natsubi's sister points out that while the world was laughing, it was only those closest to Natsubi who wished it would all end. In that confinement, Nasubi was going insane and growing obsessed with food. Soon the audience started laughing at him instead of with him. He became comedy, not for his endurance, but for the sheer humiliation of it all. The truth being that we are often drawn to other people's misery. We even find solace in it. We often want to see how far someone could be pushed before they break. Just 
Sushi had the same in mind in the end, to push someone to their limits, not to kill them, of course not, he says, but to see how far they'd go for something they hoped for. But in this case, it is also how far he could push the audience, how far he could bring them to ignore the sorrow of the man on the screen so they could laugh at how happy he got when he won a bag of chips. And in this way, Tsushi proved that humanity is often eroded by the screen. Once we see someone on television, we often stop thinking of them as a real person. That's why the internet is so toxic in so many places, because we lose our empathy when there is that distance created by social media, entertainment, and the television screen. Someone else's trouble, their downfall, their misery becomes the most entertaining thing alive. You have no idea how many times I personally watched the Australian breakdancing videos during the Olympics just to laugh at it. It was comedy gold, even though it was someone else's misery. This is even why many people love pranksters and their inevitable disasters. Of course, Japan is a lot different and many people loved him for his endurance and endure he did. Natsubi made the 1 million yen after 330 days. But Stuchia had other plans to make the show even more interesting. He flew Natsubi to Korea to survive on winnings there as well. This time, not only did Natsubi have to learn another language, but also come to terms with the fact that the person behind the camera had the power to turn his life into a nightmare. When I watched this documentary, there was something that always broke my heart, and that is Natsubi's story. The show always made fun of how long his face was. Natsubi. <laughs> Natsubi shares that when he was growing up, other children also made fun of him because of his face. He was bullied and taunted for it. To endure that stress and burden, he found out that being funny helped him find a place among the other children. It helped him be likable. This realization that he could be accepted by those around him by being funny made him want to become a comedian. His mother saw no point in him finding work as an entertainer, but Natsubi was determined. He was determined enough to, you know by now, enough to endure one whole year and three months confinement because he wanted his identity to not be tied to the mocking experience as a child but that he was someone of value in his own right with talents and passions someone who could make people laugh and make them happy the saddest thing about the show therefore is that it took this person who was looking for identity in the world and stripped him of his hope natsubi says that he didn't learn anything about being a comedian in the contest something that he surely wanted to learn by joining this powerful program all he learned from his experience was how to survive this specific situation. In fact, he lost his ability to communicate with other people, not knowing how to speak, when to speak, where to look, or even how to be funny. That isolation made him lose the ability to be a true comedian or entertainer for that matter. It made him lose more of his identity as a person. <laughs> He was reduced to the naked man trapped in a room, and the show ended that way too. Sushia is fascinated with capturing live moments almost to a psychopathic level. How do you end a show like this? Of course, why not get Natsubi to strip down before a live audience? うわ、取れた。すげえ取れた。これテレビ史に残る。その全てを理解することは無理でしたね。when I watched this part, I couldn't believe it. Natsubi was someone believing he would never be free. He had lived completely isolated for more than a year, and here he was in front of more than 500 people, cameras, and news agencies from around the world, not even allowed the dignity of clothing when he was reintroduced to the world. The audience was cheering, I bet someone was crying, and they found it all entertaining. I can't imagine what was going through his head, but Natsubi went along with it. 精神的におかしくなりそうな日がありましたか。ほぼ毎日です。When <笑> compared to how he started, I look at Natsubi's eyes and they struck me as someone who is, as he says himself, broken. An icon, yes, the most powerful moment in television, yes. 
a celebrity, yes, but broken. I'm sure there's a book out there that can present these thoughts better, but I'll try. In many ways, in order to fit into the world, be accepted by the world, or part of the norms of the world, we often lose our identity. We often lose ourselves. The hope we had of being recognized for our talents can be swept away for the interests of the world, or the audience in this case. The documentary presents Natsubi's emotions and thoughts very well, actually. The person he once respected and so as a god, he now sees as the devil. And he also loses hope in humanity. 現象生活を通知国語は本当にその人間不信にもなったりもしましたし we are left with the words of the genius Stuchia who really played the part of the devil for the entertainment value of the show. We are left with Natsubi's own words about the whole experience and the cost it took for entertainment. We see also the audience, like in the Truman Show, fascinated by the whole thing despite the misery of it all. And then disaster hits and we are left with the question of who should we pity? But the documentary does go on. He chose Natsubi as he goes to help with relief after the Fukushima disaster. He realizes that his mere presence actually cheers people up, which takes him back to the hope he had as a child. In order to bring more encouragement to the Japanese struggling in this disaster, he decides to climb Mount Everest for Fukushima. There, when met with another disaster, he also stops to help. In time, all his money is spent and he has to be reunited with Strucia, the man he internally despises, in order to raise enough money to climb Everest again. The story ends with him having accomplished this goal, and in a poetic way, it feels good to see a man whose rise to fame, who's been confined to a tiny room, and is now able to take in the full view of the open world on top of the highest mountain. <laughs> If you take a step back and look at it again, it is quite honestly the most fascinating moment in television history. There is so much to unpack, so much self-discovery to make, and so much poetry. There is also a lingering feeling of Natsubi's life being a bit directionless after leaving the show. One year and three months of doing the same thing can leave someone stuck in a certain mindset. But if I was to be honest, despite the damage done, and even with the hope that such a thing should never happen again, I'm glad it did. It's strange, but yeah, I'm glad it did. I think it was important for us to see how far someone could be pushed, how far someone was willing to push another for entertainment, because it makes us question our true identity and what we truly value in each other and in ourselves. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I hope to be doing videos, more videos on strange topics every now and then. Documentaries, great movies and series, but mostly just to bring out a new way of thinking, a new way of looking at things. So thank you again for watching and please look forward to more videos. See you next time.